everyone, this is Tara, one of the producers of Job Hunters, and what you are about to see is what's called a table read. Um, table reads are really awesome. It's one of the first times that actors get to actually see a script and read through it aloud with all the other actors before they start filming an episode. And it's one of the only times that they actually get to read through it all from scene to scene to scene and see how it's going to play out, since a lot of scenes and episodes are actually filmed in different chunks. So we took the table read for episode 6 and we pieced it together with the actual finished product of episode 6 to kind of show you a little bit about what happens behind the scenes. I hope you enjoy! him in the face with her fists. A bloody dude tries to hold back the blood coming out of his chest. Rocks are thrown from an emplacement of upturned tables, narrowly missing a jumping extra. There's screaming and the clash of weapons. Charred paper rains down, left over from an earlier explosion. Bodies litter the floor. Devin and Avery are camped behind a countertop. This got, a this got out of hand really quickly. Cut to job hunters opening. <laughs> Interior living room. Tiffany charges past. She is full on into it, and she is carrying a bloody knife. She sees Devin and Avery camped out. Hey guys, you should try this. It's really cathartic. A team of ninjas flip out from like nowhere because that's what they do. Are those ninjas? Yep, that's Eddie, Takahashi, and Shoji from Subfloor G. Hey guys! A dude runs up and attacks Tiffany. Tiffany stabs dude, then runs off, her eye catching something interesting. Dude slumps to the floor, crawling over to Devin. The battle wages on in the background. Help me! I've seen him help. You're better off just taking your chances. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Avery. Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence, Avery. Now, what are your symptoms? I, w I was stabbed! <laughs> Do you have any family history of stabbing? Avery rolls her eyes. She opens Devin's medical pack and grabs out some gauze and she pushes it against the wound. Here, apply pressure. When I was on my rainbows tour, the stage collapsed and a roadie was impaled on a girder. Gauze was all he needed until the med techs got to him. I was going to do that. Hey, I'm pretty good at this. Why don't you go find someone else to help? Or go find Paige. I haven't seen her in a while. Fine. Devin gets up to go look for Paige. The battle continues. Interior bathroom. Paige is pacing, talking to herself in the mirror. We hear muffled, ongoing battle sounds outside the door. Kill Devin, and his uncle gives you a ticket out of the arena into a cushy job. Don't kill Devin, and every and probably die in here like everyone in your family. Paige looks distraught. The door bursts open, and Paige effortlessly punches someone coming through with a spear, halting their war cry bit cry. She shuts the door again, yeah, mocking them out. Totally nonplussed. She is deep in thought. Your family dies, Paige. Your corpse is just a stepping stone for some junior VP on his way up, way up the corporate ladder. This is your chance to get out. He's just some guy. Paige comes to her senses, looking at herself in the mirror. No, he's not. I have to tell him. Paige exits the bathroom. Cut to interior living room. Fighting continues with extras charging each other with heavy objects. <laughs> Tiffany narrowly dodges a body, thrown into the wall. The body ricochets off, <laughs> <laughs> knocking oh over a lamp as they rejoin the fight. The lampshade falls to the ground, Tiffany eyes it, thinking. Tiffany hesitantly picks up the lampshade, putting it to her mouth as though it were a megaphone. And Matt throws a knife at Alex, <laughs> which is pretty. Nif Tiffany's <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany is cut off as she ducks, narrowly avoiding a face thrown at her. She resumes her normal posture, starting her line again. Matthew Eli launches his kitchen knife at Al Alec Polchewski, scoring a direct hit to the calf. That's going to leave a mark. Polchewski responds quickly, pulling the knife out, and ooh, not a good move. Eli has used the opening to let loose another knife, this time directly to the sternum. <laughs> Cut to interior living room. The battle continues. Avery is running from body to body, putting gauze on them. Apply pressure. She moves over to another wounded individual, handing them gauze. Apply pressure. She stops at the top half of a body, torso severed. It is about to give the same instruction and she realizes he's dead. Apply- oh, you're dead. <laughs> we hear screaming and the clash of weapons. A knife spins into frame and lands a few inches from Avery's face. Shock, Avery looks to her attacker. We see a point of view from her, a knifeist with a bandolier of knives is smiling. He draws a second knife and throws <laughs> he draws a second knife and throws it at her, pinning her shirt sleeve to the wall. She tugs at it helplessly, trying to free herself as the knifeist draws another knife grinning ear to ear. With a flourish, the knife is throws it at Avery's head. We watch as it flips towards her. Avery braces to be struck, shutting her eyes. At the last possible second, a potlet held by Max deflect 
deftly deflects it. Avery looks up at her savior. Thank you. Without taking his eyes off Avery, Max throws the potlet at the kneecaps of the breakfast. <laughs> it ricochets off his knee, knocking him and a second warrior to the ground. Max pulls out the knife, pinning Avery, and casually throws it across the room, resulting in a scream. No problem. Avery is struck by Max's masculine. <laughs> the way that girls are when confronted by chivalrous masculine guys who are masculine and chivalrous. That, that was really nice of you. Max looks at Avery for a moment, then shakes it off. It's getting really crazy down here. You should find somewhere safe. Think you can make it up to the rooms? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> a madman charges Max from behind. Without looking up, Max throws an elbow into the attacker's stomach. Max then flips madman to the ground, all without flinching. Cool, I'll cover you. Good to see you're safe. There's a look between Max and Avery. It's unusual to hear Max concerned about anyone else, and Avery is confused and a bit attracted. He's manly. <laughs> <laughs> Avery heads through the fray towards the stairs and Max turns to a new attacker head on. Cuts you into your living room. More combat sounds. We see Hoxon jump from a tabletop onto Albie. Tiffany is now holding an improvised microphone. And a flying dolphin maneuver from Hoxon, perfectly executed. Hoxon follows up with a Canadian ear gouge that will earn him a trip to the penalty box. Hoxon breaks it off with Albi, confused for a moment. He looks at Tiffany, who gestures into the penalty box decisively. Hoxon grunts his rage and moves into the box. Albi comes over by Tiffany for an interview. We're here on the field with Andrew Albi, 5'9", from Westchester, Massachusetts. That flying dolphin from Hoxon was well executed. How do you plan to come back from this? You gotta give it 100%, and that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm giving it 110%. We're gonna get it done in the end. We just need to get some good hits in. Get us there. We don't need big hits. We need small hits that add up to a win, you know? Hoxon's time in the penalty box is up. Now that he's had some time to think, let's see his strategy. Hoxon exits the box and immediately tackles Albie out of frame. Tiffany takes a startled half step back out of the way. Devin walks obliviously through the room, looking for Paige. He is turning in circles as he walks, calling out for her. He narrowly avoids a Hoxon and LB who smash into the wall behind him, missing him by a hair. Paige? Paige? Devin stumbles across something on the ground. He stops to pick it up, looking at it. It is a severed head. I have one, actually. He looks at someone off screen. All right. <laughs> Yours? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Devin sets the head back down and continues on his way. A girl holding a small statue is snuck up on Devin and clocks him in the head. He falls to the ground, conscious but dazed. The girl straddles him and raises the small statue, about to smash his head in. Paige suddenly intervenes with a wild haymaker. <laughs> Get off of him! Paige connects, knocking the girl unconscious. Paige pulls the girl off Devin. You alright? Paige, oh my god, you saved my life. Devin, I have to tell you something. Don't worry. I know. Y you know? Yeah, I, I feel the same way about you. Uh, no, that. Wait, what? You do? Get out of here, cut to. Interior hallway. Avery avoids two wrestlers as she makes her way down the hallway. The camera follows her closely, but thick fog makes it difficult to see at a distance. As soon as she passes the wrestlers, we hear a war cry as a warrior runs down the hall with a spear. Avery flattens herself against the wall as he goes past. Avery hand, Avery's hand finds a doorknob, and she quickly makes her way into the room, interior of Paige's room. Avery, still shaken, rummages through Paige's drawers and belongings, trying to find something to defend herself with. Avery pulls the pillow off the bed to reveal a black pistol. She readily grabs it, posting up against the headboard, black pistol pointed at the door. <clears throat> Tight shot. We pan down from Avery's concerned face to the black pistol. A small time passing fade. The black pistol is a bit askew. We pan back up to Avery's face, and she is now sleeping, gun still in hand. Interior living room. We see an extra running with scissors, screaming. Two extras get into a brawl, punching each other back and forth. One extra grabs the other, lifting him into the air. Together, they charge the plate glass window of the living room, bursting through the shattering glass. We've already found this. One manages to get the upper hand, throwing the other off the balcony to the ground below him with a Wilhelm scream and thumb. We see the crumpled body and a woman on fire crosses through the frame. Two extras wrestle over a knife. The woman on fire is chased a beat afterwards by a set of housemates with spears. <laughs> Cut to interior Max and Devin's room. Flinnesis enters Max's room, taking stock of the surroundings. He looks evil. Cut to interior living room. We see a medium shot of Tiffany, who is continuing her sports commentary. Mason's in a headlock. This might be the end of him. Don't know where she got a samurai sword, but it's going to be a game changer for her. 
Max has 10 kills in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> we'll have to do well to pop that as we approach the final quarter. We see Max having just disappeared, dispatched an adversary. He turns to Tiffany. Tiff, what are you doing? That's really, that's super distracting. I'm just... Tiffany is interrupted as darts begin to fire from positions around the house. Any attackers drop quickly. Terrified characters look to the ceiling for explanations. House combat is now over. Thank you for your participation and interest in maintaining arena averages. House security protocols are now in effect. Tiffany looks to be concentrating, then mimics the Maywin announcer. House combat is now over. Thank you for your participation and interest in maintaining arena averages. House security protocols are now in effect. We see a pan through. We see a pan through the various rooms that house fighting. Dead bodies are strewn around, and extras walk through, beginning to pick up the pieces. Interior Max and Devin's room. Flinnesis hears the announcement echoing through the room in Max and Devin's room. He looks irritated, having lost his chance. Suddenly, he's struck with an idea. He grabs the chain off of the foot of Max's bed and begins wrapping it around his own neck. Flinnesis taps his knife against it a couple times and looks satisfied. He poses and turns off the light, ready to strike Max coming through the door. Interior living room. Paige, Devin, Max, and Tiffany, all disheveled and worse for wear, are around the table post-battle. Detrius from the event is scattered throughout the background, including broken furniture, bloody walls, and scorch marks. A few extras mill around picking up the pieces. Well, I think we all learned a valuable lesson. Hey, where's Avery? Oh, she's upstairs. I told her that. I'll go find her. I can help. Both Max and Tiffany head upstairs. Devin and Paige stay downstairs, sharing a happy moment. Into your hallway, a few wounded bodies line the hallway floor. Max and Tiffany are going door to door calling, Avery, into your Max and Devin's room. We see Flinnesis hiding in Max's room, carrying a knife. He's clearly poised to make a jump for the door when it opens. Ominous music makes it clear this is something the viewers should be concerned with. The door opens and Max peeks in, flipping on the light. Avery. Flinnesis jumps at Max, knife headed to Max's throat. You may when loving savage. Hostility detected. Max, again, without flinching, ducks out of the way, which causes Flinnesis to slam into the doorframe, dropping him to the ground. Several darts fly out, ricocheting off Flinnesis' improvised neck chain. Several more darts fly out and thump into Flinnesis. The ominous music stops, threat averted. Which is why the audience doesn't see it coming when we cut to interior pages room. Tiffany opens the door, stepping in. Avery? In a split second, we see Avery shoot away and reflexively shoot the black pistol with a loud report. It strikes Tiffany just below the heart. Slow motion. Tiffany looks around. Then Tiffany looks down at the wound, her hand rising to her chest. She looks up at Avery, confused, and drops to the ground. Avery's eyes widen, shocked and scared. She drops the black pistol. Interior living room, slow motion. Paige and Devin instantly know something is wrong and begin running up the stairs. Interior of Paige's room, fully, 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 whatever. A muffled heartbeat, decreasing in speed and intensity throughout the remainder of the scene. Otherwise, despite the on-screen action, there is silence. Slow motion, Max rushes in. He looks at Avery, confused, and back down to Tiffany. He's not sure what to do. There's commotion and confusion. Devin and Paige run into the doorway. The characters are yelling, but there is no sound heard. Devin drops to Tiffany's side, trying to hold the blood in. Face of black. She's not breathing. Cut to Job Hunters, closing credits, somber edition. <laughs> somber edition. <laughs>